frequently challenging, but he's never, never boring. So uh, I've got no idea. I'm unsighted on it, but I have a funny feeling that it might contain the theme that um, that uh, cloud might be somehow involved in there, helping us to address some of the uh, the issues we've been talking about. Uh, but that's just a mere guess. Uh, anyway, Liam, with uh, no further ado, uh, welcome, sir. Looking forward to hear what you've got to say. Good. Thanks very much, Mark. Can you just wave to show that you can hear me? So we get on going. Good. Great. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much for having me. Um, and uh, I'm really pleased to have a good conversation today and um, talk about what happened. One of the things that I was asked to do was just a bit of reflection about what happened as we went into the recent events and what did we learn um, from an international perspective. The reason I can do that is my name's uh, Liam Maxwell. I'm the Director of Government Transformation at AWS, which means my job is to help governments transform. I'm in that wonderful position of really being able to help governments with their reform programs, help them cut through blockers, help them move the things that need to be moved and um, get their changes happen uh, to happen. And one of the reasons um, I do that um, is um, because we did that um, with a lot of fun in the UK previously, and then we started helping lots of other governments. And uh, ADRS came to me and said, look, why don't you come and do that with us so we can help governments move faster? Um, so a bit of a talk here about how government stepped up in COVID-19. Um, and we're starting to talk about responsive and inventive government. Now, now for lots of you that um, have been in this field for a long time, sometimes you sit up and go, wait, what? What do you mean? But actually, this was the age of government the last year. It's been really fascinating to watch, really interesting, because what we did was we started seeing governments start to encounter all those issues that startups have. Demand going through the roof, raised expectations from users so that people expect what they need and that that um that um duopoly of, uh, of views on um, on privacy comes into that as well very changing context um uh and and a threat and also one of those moments when the reality was actually it was really there on the ground that what what you had to cope with was something that was happening live and in front of us and lots of us needed to know what to do very very quickly all the way through society and so just think about this. These were the things which people came to us with. And this, these are the four themes that really hit us. Everybody wants to do stuff at speed, government at speed. It's really amazing what can happen when you see a government working in one direction at speed. Government at scale because scale, well, government is for everybody. These are solutions which have to work for everybody. Um, so you need to be in a position where um, you can do things at great scale, but also securely because trust and trust in services and trust in systems is something that's right at the heart of making these things a success. If you don't trust what's coming for you and the services that are available to you, they're not going to get taken up. And you can see that that's one of the, the big things we're really pushing for as all of the services come through in this country, but it's the same around the world. People want to trust in the vaccine programs to make sure they work. They need to be secure. They need to be effective. So just a couple of views here, hopefully give you a, a sort of quick tour around the world of some things we spotted, which were really interesting. Um, just going to uh, a, a, the ASEAN Smart City for um, in Selangor, which is just outside Kuala Lumpur um, and uh, in Malaysia. And there they were just getting going with a s delivery unit to try and get people to start paying bills online and starting to trade with people online um, when the pandemic hit. And they suddenly realized they had to go online. And so putting together a whole series of faster, more secure, paid government services that introduce the citizen to dealing with, this, with the government directly. This all happened overnight. It was a really, really massive change. There's about six and a half million people in that uh, region. And that government had to act really, really quickly, really fast, putting up um, payment services. And what they, they led to is, you know, using the cloud has helped us um, get the transformation going the main point there was the speed. They had something running, they could get it moving. A second example here, um, if you look on the left, I love that picture of Cagliari in Italy. Um, it's one of the things you have a local government needing to get moving quickly. And one of the things we found all the time was local governments working on some of some very antiquated IT had to get moving very quickly and transport their job to remote first, as we called it then in the early days, but then really to be responsive, to build a responsive public service. 
And yeah, I've got some lovely products which help you do that. Um, uh, Workspaces is one of those. But what it did do was it meant that you could um, you could get a government working quickly outside the office. And in a similar way, remote learning, as you know, will have got started. And we've seen a large number of people started to move now completely remote schooling, much more so internationally. And there's another example coming than we saw in, in, in the UK, actually. So it was a really, really big move for a lot of governments. Um, you see the the time scale there was crazy going to teach 30 percent of all the school children in italy in eight days really really fast but got moving and be smart was one of the partners we worked with they were really really quick um getting this moving one of the next things that popped up and you'll have seen this in the uk as well but the 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 need to go and claim benefit and the need to go and engage with the state for the first time as people lost their jobs was really really important really fast but all those years of relying on legacy COBOL systems suddenly came back to hit everybody really quickly. So how do you do that? How do you actually build and how do you build a call center quickly in the cloud and get that moving? And one thing is this Rhode Island, a really good example here, they started um, uh, getting from 2000 calls a day. Uh, sorry, sorry, to from 75 calls a day to, to 2000 concurrent calls. So that was a huge impact, impact on all of the staff in that organization, moving to 140 claims um, processed. That sounds small, but with, the, with, the, uh, with the, the, the scale of that change was huge for them to get that moving. And really the trend that's coming through here, I hope I can show you is that the next step, what's our next step? People in Rhode Island were sitting there going out, this is our next step to move. How do we make this crisis work in a way that can help us rebuild our citizen services. The other example I wanted to talk about, um, just as an example of remote teaching, was Egypt. Um, they had had this idea for a long time. They've got a very, um, a very charismatic education minister, Shorky, who um, had this idea of having a pre-COVID ambition that they could have the Egyptian Knowledge Bank would help everybody across Egypt. Um, and when he realised that everyone was going to work from home and they needed to shut the schools um the minister just decreed he just said look right you're all gonna have to go and work from home they did 22 million k through 12 students so what we would call you know kindergarten through to secondary school to students in under four days got up and running with the classrooms and got moving and for egypt this has actually started to provide a completely different perspective on their role, not just within Egypt, but their role within the Arab world and particularly within the African Arab world, because they are now in a position, they've just demonstrated that you can start to do remote learning at scale. They are now in a position where they're looking at the scale of what they can do in a completely different way. And the impact that that will have on the government of Egypt and the way that Egypt works and Egypt's foreign um, relations you can see is really starting to dig in now as they can identify that they can do this um, driving forward um, change, but also driving forward um, the ability to increase their reach. And they thought about multinationality schools, but actually it's now possible. And it's one of the things we've been working with them on to, uh, to try and get that moving. Um, and so think about it. It's, it's actually how many people you can reach, how much scale you can get to has become a really important component of those four things that are pushing this through. Speed and scale, really, really making the change as they went through that. Um, another example, uh, New South Wales. Um, one of the uh, examples here um, is, is really having to move very, very quickly um, to do remote uh, medicine and also having to be able to um, contact people and have people connect with them. And again, the thing that's really made a difference here was the ability to set up voice services really quickly. So although form filling and that, that sort of asynchronous deal that you get with government has long been the first change that you've seen in the digital transformations we've, we've had going, what's happening now is the ability to use voice and the ability to connect with people and um, have conversations with them has really, really um, boomed in this. And again, the back office system works in that way. So you've got now moving from an asynchronous government, which is just dealing with forms, to a synchronous government that talks to people, and then a synchronous government that's actually looking at the data. And one of the things that I saw that was fascinating to look at was the establishment of that first um, PPE management dashboard and resource management dashboard that went into Downing Street. 
um, very early on to try and identify where the shortages were, and what was happening at that point. And that was really after years of people banging on about make the policy work to the data. Here was the best example we've had yet of that happening. And again, just another thing on, on, on the, the science being and having the genome research um, projects in place really makes it's a really strong advantage for the UK. It gives the UK a really st strong basis on which to build their next steps. And, and um, Matt has been really clear about that as that the, the ability to tie the technology together and then um, use it to analyze has been right at the heart of what they've been able to make decisions on. It's not perfect, but it's, get, it's, it's just such a huge step change. And then just again, another example, which I really like because of just the speed of doing it in Latin America. Um, they did this quite a long time before the disease really hit, they moved to um, very um, um, remote learning with a huge number of, of, of active learnings. So um, that happened, um, you know, a tenfold increase overnight. So really, what am I trying to say here? Well, what we're really seeing is governments becoming responsive. So um, my colleague, Mike Bevan, was on the other day and with you, and I know that he may have shared this, this picture, but this is, um, this is your sort of classic government response center. It's all based on having uh, an established call center to technology in their contact center put together and response online tied together sometimes in a slightly um, clunky way. And what's happened in a very short period of time, I mean, goodness me, can you imagine working in an environment like that? Again, what's that going to be like? Um, moving to people working, doing the same things at home. And so a couple of examples there in Hounslow and Waltham Forest, where just being able to move quickly and being able to deliver services quickly has meant that using cloud services has helped governments move faster. Um, the message I'm trying to get to you is, is this. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You can't go back to what was there, I don't think. It's rather like the transparency agenda. The transparency agenda, which came in in 2010, showing people that they could understand what contracts were being let, how they worked. That was so, tra so powerful to help move the reforms. You haven't seen things move back. Some of the data is more difficult to find now, and it's a, it's a bit of a swinging pendulum, but it's always going to go in that direction. And it's the same thing here, I think, with the ability to work remotely, is you won't be able to put go back to the old days. The ability to move fast and to move at scale is something people now really expect. And so those three things at the top there, we saw really important, but the one thing that customers and, and our government customers kept on coming back to us to ask, was how do you do the last bit? And the last bit, really, where we saw the UK work fast is because effective procurement delivers speed, but it also can deliver economic growth. And people around the world continually coming to us to ask, how do you manage to get procurement to actually deliver growth for our economies, not just in COVID, but as we grow out of COVID? And it goes back to this thing we talked about many years ago, which was instead of going out and buying siloed systems, going and buying the whole thing in one blob, if you can buy components, you will be in a much more effective position to, to, to deliver the services you need because you will have much less risk, you'll be able to access speed, and you'll be able to access innovation. In essence, moving from that old day of um, a, uh, a prime vendor to the ability to buy lots and lots of services from innovative companies don't have to be big don't have to be small they're innovative doing that has been really powerful by using the cloud um, procurement framework and using and um, allowing people to base things on cloud services and this is really important as we see this around the world as people are starting to build services using cloud they're also starting to build using innovative companies and that's why at the heart of this when I first started in government, this was the sort of thing that was written about government IT. And yet the UK, one of the UK's biggest success stories has been this, that growing from a small number of um, companies providing um, services to IT to a wide range of companies providing IT all the way across the market is right at the heart of the changes that people have been able to do and why the UK has been able to act at speed. That's one of the reasons why Australia has done really well as well. But it's only by doing that, that 
the and, and being able to buy from people and, and, and base your procurement and move at speed using innovative companies that you're able to move at the speed that the public will need to work with. And just to show the proof is in the pudding, when I first joined AWS, the first thing I did was I worked out, went into the, the systems and we worked out how many of those companies were running um, on AWS to provide that service. It's not all of them by far, but there's a good spread of organizations there that are building their services um, on, 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 the, on that platform. And what this does is it gives government buyer, it gives government um, leaders the ability to access the speed, the scale, but also the innovation that they need in order to drive the change that COVID is bringing them. So in many ways, the UK was in a really strong position in comparison to other countries around the world for what they did. And it's been really fascinating to see how that's worked out. Um, there are things everyone can learn. The thing I suppose we have learned from watching this around the world has been that if you start building government with these four, your government systems with these four things at the heart of what you want to do, you're going to be able to respond to threat more effectively. And that's going to be the government that we see in the future is the government that is responsive or people will use an alternative. And I think that's really at the heart of the, 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 the offering and now the government can have. And we see that successful governments, um, governments, you know, particularly like the one in Rhode Island, which was able to adapt really quickly, are the ones where the greatest citizen satisfaction comes back. And that's been a really huge change in terms of people now looking at their governments, if I go back to the beginning of this, as a responsive, scalable, effective organization in a digital way. That's happened in the last year. It's really happened fast. We've seen, you know, everyone's that huge cliche, we've seen five years, 10 years reform in one year. But it's true, that's what has happened. And it's been a really interesting thing to look at. And it's one of the things that we, um, AWS have found really interesting and really helpful to share and help others build their capacity using those examples so that they can start to build a responsive government in their country. So that I hope has given you a good perspective. Over to you, Mark. Thanks, Liam. Well, uh, that, was, that was really, really interesting. And I uh, can't put the toothpaste back into the tube. It's going to uh, it's going to stick with me for some days, probably in probably in the small hours of the morning and I wake up. Going, ah, I can't. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed that. We've got probably, I don't know, um, a minute or a minute and a half or something. I just wanted to um, just briefly ask you to reflect on how this evolves um, our understanding of what what kind of innovation government should be doing and what kind of inf uh, innovation private sector can do on its behalf so obviously we've seen some really fascinating case studies of how aws in this instance has been able to really enable yeah. them to move quickly so are we evolving our understanding standing about who does what and we've had quite a bit of uh, interesting chat already today about the evolving public private sector relationship um so you know around platforms and ecosystems and where the innovation happens and so just interested just a few final yeah. reflections on that and then we'll all go after lunch yeah so uh, i'm sorry to stand between you all and lunch but the the one thing i would um I would say about that, it goes back to focus and leverage, doesn't it? These two words that we talk about a lot, that if you, the, the government, if the government can leverage the resources of utility plays that are out there and uh, resources that, that are already been built, the government is going to be able to work at much greater speed. And that's where um, getting, getting the decision right on what, what you want to develop and what you want to innovate and what you can leverage from, um, from a, a market of mature providers that can provide, you know, that can give you the scale and the scope. Um, I think getting that right early on is a really important thing to do. And the innovation can then happen in product development and service development, knowing that you've got a secure and scalable base on which to build your solutions. And once you've got that, I think that's where the real focus, you know, the real focus for government is in that subject matter expert knowledge of how government works and how the services work with the citizen and the relationship between the citizen and the state. And then leverage the things which can help you accelerate and be utterly ruthless in doing so. I know that's, a, but you know, the, the things that are there, just just get out, use them. They're, they, they are, um, many of them are much easier and simpler to leverage than you think. And, and just continually think, has anyone else built this before that I can go and use? would be my, my, my last point is just think about that when you're going to buy, has anyone else got anything similar? 
um because that will get you moving much much quicker and there are a lot more things similar and you know as we've we've done the ability to have open source solutions in government really supports that and we've done a lot of work in that which we'll talk which we can talk about another day yeah super that, that resonates with all sorts of things we've been talking about this morning but uh uh, as ever with a good, great keynote it kind of leaves you with more questions um than than it solves which is i think the point and and i think that whole business about uh scale uh in your instance cloud providers but the private sector um uh in general uh, and its evolving relationship with government and where innovation happens i think is really um is, is a fascinating uh, dynamic to this um liam thank you very much indeed uh it, that's a great uh, appetizer for lunch and uh we'll see everybody back uh at uh, c consulting his notes hurriedly um at uh 1 so 10 to 2 for our third and final session on tackling economic inequality so thanks so much liam thank you thanks a lot